The college football playoff race comes down to these four teams as we enter championship weekend. Welcome to the Voice of College Football. We break down the game we all love each and every day with you. Best discussion, debate, and analysis because of your participation. We appreciate your support. Please like the video, share the videos out on social media, and subscribe. Ohio State, blown out by Michigan this past weekend, would appear not to be a college football playoff-worthy team. USC's on a pretty good roll, and of course, they've got the Pac-12 championship game against Utah. We will preview and have already previewed that one in spades. Go to the USC channel. Please check out our USC live show with Matt Zemeck. We will provide even more previews on the Pac-12 championship game in particular, and the Big 12 championship game right here on the main channel with Melissa Trebowasser. All right, we've got Alabama, we got Tennessee lurking from the SEC, of course, with two losses. Any other conference teams with two losses would be eliminated, but we will talk about Bama and Tennessee. But right out of the gate, we will say that the team not here, just because we don't have a helmet, TCU fans, TCU. All right, TCU's in if they win. That's all there is to it. We've heard commentary made by certain people out there that are supposed to be college football analysts that say, if TCU wins, they're still not worthy because they're really not that good. They're not that talented. And they look too much at recruiting rankings and it look at name brand. TCU, of course, if they win the Big 12 championship, they're undefeated. That would be completely unprecedented and unfair. That's what matters. It would be completely unfair if TCU was left out with a conference championship and an undefeated record. What are, else are they supposed to do? All right, so TCU's in with a win. So we are talking about if these teams lose, talking about TCU and USC in particular. If USC wins, they are the Pac-12 champions, so add it up. The ACC's out. Georgia's in. Michigan's in. Regardless of whether TCU wins, if USC wins the Pac-12 championship at 12-1, and they are in. They've got a solid resume now that they've defeated UCLA, Notre Dame, and a Utah team in the past three weeks and avenged that loss to Utah, of course, 43-42, a controversial loss at Rice-Eccles Stadium back in October. So TCU wins, they're in. USC wins, they're in. But let's talk about losses by those two teams and how they would stack up against Ohio State in particular, also Tennessee, Alabama. So let's slay Alabama and Tennessee first and foremost. They've lost two games. Now, for me, that doesn't automatically eliminate them based on two losses because I'm comparing and we are comparing zero loss teams against one loss team. So why not compare one loss teams to two loss teams, especially playing in the best conference in college football? I've acknowledged that for years. It is still the same here in 2022. So forget what's happened in the past regarding the SEC and its status. If we look only at 2022, yes, the SEC is still the best conference in college football. That doesn't mean its teams should automatically be placed in the college football playoff. So when we look at Alabama and Tennessee, we would give the nod of Tennessee over Alabama first and foremost, because guess what? They played on the field, and I know it was a super close game, and if they played at a neutral site, Alabama would be a favorite, let alone playing at uh, Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, but Alabama did play the game, and there's a reason we play football games that's determine who is the better team and worthy and who has earned moving on. And so in this case, Tennessee flat out would get the nod over Alabama. In my estimation, they should. They won the game head to head. They lost to Georgia, the best team in the country on the road. No shame in that. They got dominated. It was only 27 to 14 on the scoreboard, which sounds like a competitive game. It was not a competitive game, but they did not get blown out. In my estimation, I consider that not to be a blowout, but they got game controlled. They got dominated 27 to 14. It was 27 to 7 in the fourth quarter. The last TD was meaningless. And of course, Tennessee's other loss, not a good one. They were in the game at 35 31, so not blown out from the start. So let's put it into context, but blown out in the fourth quarter in losing to South Carolina by four touchdowns. Now, South Carolina turned out to be a much better team than they were earlier in the season by proving that against Clemson. So that loss not as bad or egregious as we had thought a week ago. Tennessee, of course, with a win against LSU. LSU has slipped up in recent weeks, most notably against Texas A&M. That's not good for Alabama or Tennessee. What LSU has done, and most likely they are going to get manhandled in the SEC championship game. Now, if LSU defeats Georgia, that helps Alabama and Tennessee's cause. Still, I do not believe that their resumes 
rank with a one loss Ohio State or a one loss USC or a one loss TCU. Let's match up, therefore, Ohio State, USC, and TCU with USC winning or TCU losing. So again, TCU wins, they're in. USC loses, they're out. So we're matching up one loss, Ohio State, USC, and TCU teams. Let's look at USC at 12-1 and one, with the Pac-12 championship game against Utah. They would have wins against three nine and three teams. UCLA, Utah, Oregon State. Difficult to separate those teams in regards to the best win there. We will just say it's Utah to a certain extent because it's in the Pac-12 championship game and gives USC that championship bullet point. They also beat Notre Dame, a good team, 8-4. and four. They also beat Washington State at 7-5. and five. Those are the five teams with winning records that USC defeated. They also defeated a group of five team with a winning record in Fresno State at 8-4. and four. In total... All the teams that USC has played this season are 71 and 73. Their Power 5 opponents are 58 and 62. Their Pac-12 opponents, USC has played a watered-down Pac-12 schedule, not because the Pac-12 is not good. It's been a pretty good conference this year. But because they haven't faced Washington or Oregon, their Pac-12 opponents are only 32 and 49. And they are 5 and 1 against uh, teams with winning records. Obviously, we're only looking at this if USC defeats Utah, so we might as well throw in Utah as strengthening USC schedule. So let's look at that. The total record for USC schedule after the Utah game will be 80 and 77. Power five nudges past 500. The Pac-12 record improves slightly to 39 and 52, adding on Utah, who is would be 7-3 and three with a loss to USC. All right, how does that match up against TCU? Again, this is a TCU team with a loss to Kansas State. Now, if they lose this game 52 to nothing, that's got to factor in. But let's say it's a com reasonably competitive game. They lose by 7 or 10 points, something in that range, even a two-touchdown loss to Kansas State. TCU has defeated these winning record teams. Kansas State, 9-3, and 38-28. They came back from 18 down. Texas, they won that game a couple weeks ago. In Austin, Texas Tech win. They're a 7-5 team. Oklahoma State 7-5. And, and, of course, TCU came back from 17 down to win that one in overtime. They have also defeated Baylor, Oklahoma, and Kansas. Decent teams, bowl teams at 6-6. Six and six, But four winning record teams, along with one from the group of five in SMU at 7-5. When we look at TCU's overall... Strength of schedule, throwing out the strength of schedule ranking, but actually looking at the opponents and whether they're winning or losing games. TCU's opponents are 72 and 70 coming into the Big 12 championship game. 59 and 60 in Power 5, 36 and 45 in the conference. So think about this for a second. In the Big 12, we don't really need to analyze the schedule inside the conference like we do in other conferences, like in the Pac-12, we just noted that USC did not play Washington or Oregon. So the only reason TCU has an under 500 record in its opponents in the conference is because they didn't play themselves. So basically, they're 9-0. Subtract that from a 500 record because the, every conference finishes 500 against itself, of course. And there you go. TCU, 36-45. Those are the opponents in the Big 12. They're 5-0 against winning teams, teams with winning records. Okay, so TCU wins, they're in. But we're looking at a loss against Kansas State and if they still have earned a playoff spot. So let's look at the same numbers after the Kansas State game. TCU's opponents improved to 82 and 73. That's 67 and 62. Power 5 opponents. The Big 12 record improves to 44 and 47. Now let's look at the Buckeyes of Ohio State, of course with a fourth-quarter meltdown against Michigan at home, losing 45-23. However, I separate 45-23 from, let's say, losing 21-0 in the first half and then just kind of coasting to wins and losing 45-23. So the game was competitive until about seven or eight minutes left in the game. Then they get, did get trampled uh, at the close, certainly by three scores to Michigan. Here's Ohio State's victories at the top, Penn State. 
That would be the best win by record and by ranking 10 and 2. Notre Dame 8 and 4, Maryland and Iowa at 7 and 5. They also defeated Toledo as a group of 5 team at 7 and 5, the one group of 5 team with a winning record. Opponents records 74 and 70, 64 and 56 in the Power 5. That's the strongest. 36 and 45 in the Big 10. 5 and 1 against teams with winning records. Of course, we've got the five wins as we see right there. And then they lost to Michigan. Let's look at how dominant these teams were against that schedule. First, USC. They've got a point differential of 16.2. TCU at 16.8, a little bit better. Ohio State much better than the other two, dominating its opponents at over 25 points per game, even with the 22-point loss against Michigan. Yards per play. Ohio State and USC dominant at 7.3 and 7.827. Uh, TCU averaging less than 7 yards per play. On defense, actually, USC's been pretty bad this year all season, giving up over 6 yards per play. TCU at 5.42, Ohio State at number 1. So Ohio State by far has been the most dominant team comparing these three against its schedule. They beat teams worse. They gain more yards per play. They give up less yards per play by far than the other two teams, TCU and USC. Of course, USC's loss, we've got a factor in the losses. The USC loss was the Utah, again, two-point play at the end of the game, controversial finish. They had stopped Utah on a third and 10, got a pass interference, lost the game on a two-point conversion. TCU, this is a hypothetical loss to Kansas State by how many points? By a field goal at the end, by a touchdown, by a score, by two scores, whatever it may be, we're going to think it would be a reasonable loss, something in the one to two score range. And Ohio State, of course, lost to Michigan, 45 to 23. Add it all up. TCU wins. They're in. USC loses. They got to be out. Tennessee, Alabama, sorry, you're out regardless. I believe Ohio State has the best resume against TCU and against USC if those two teams lose this weekend. I would go Ohio State over USC over TCU in that order if those are the results this weekend in the Big 12 and the Pac-12 championship games. Leave your comments below right here at the Voice of College Football. We are live all the time. We've got team channels, Florida State, Miami. Shoot, we've got uh, West Virginia. We've got uh, Oklahoma, Ohio State, Michigan shows, as well as USC, of course. Right here at the Voice of College Football, join us every day. Lock it in as we take you through the college football playoffs.